Good morning, Claudia. Thank you for doing this for us. Um, do you just want to give a brief int introduction? Okay. Yeah, so um, my name is Claudia Lainez. I'm from El Salvador. I came to the United States in 1994 uh, when I was 17 years old. I live in Oakland with my daughter, who's 20 years old. She was born here. And I've been living in the Bay Area since 1994. Thank you. And then just to go off on that, what country did you come from and what was the reason for your leaving? El Salvador. Okay. So um, I came in 94. It was right after after the Civil War. Um, okay. You know, that was uh, when going on. It was going on for many years. And, uh, you know, since I remember, I grew up in the middle of that. And after that, the country was very devastated. There were not a lot of options for people there. I was in school, but, um, you know, at that time, a lot of people were um, migrating to the United States. So most of my family came um, like um, 89, 90. So um, it was just like the kids were left there. And then finally, um, we we made the um, the journey to the states too and um so everybody's here because uh we were looking for a better a better um, life yeah better life but um a lot of times you know we, we think it's it's going to be better here but once i got here i didn't think about it i was going to be undocumented i was not going to be able to go to school like everybody else and all these challenges you know i didn't think about that but somehow we um we made it mm -hmm. um you know um life it's a little bit different here even if you're undocumented i realized that and i was able to to work and you know do other things that um that I, I wasn't doing in my country or you know at that time i was making like five dollars an hour oh, wow. and when I, when I work in my country you know it will make like five dollars a day oh, so it was a huge God. difference for me uh -huh. um yeah, at that time, you know, minimum weight was like five dollars an hour. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> huge difference. Yeah, it's a huge wow. difference. So even you know, being undocumented, working a regular job like McDonald's, or I used to work at Burger King when I came, and you know, getting five dollars an hour, that was a huge difference for me. So um, you know, it, it can make a lot of. Um, a lot of changes like helping the family that was left there and you know uh, life here is a lot different but um, it's still it was better than what it was um, like you said life here is so different like it, it has its good and it's bad so as a mm -hmm. CPS holder what would you say are some of the positive and negative aspects you experienced so in 2001, um, uh, TPS was granted for El Salvador because there was a huge earthquake. Mm -hmm. And um, so all the people that were here uh, during that time were able to apply for this status. And, you know, the country has been des devastated for the war. And then, you know, natural disasters, one after another, after another, after another. And so at that time, we got the opportunity to apply for this benefit. Um, and... The good things at that time, uh, it was that you were able to get a work permit, a social security, uh, to get a driver's license, um, and, you know, it pay taxes, uh, get a tax refund and all that stuff that comes with it, right? Um, the, so those are the good things. Um, I was able to go to community college. Uh, before then, I could... I couldn't, I couldn't because I didn't have any documents, mm -hmm. uh, but with the work permit, I was able to go to community college and, um, you know, learn English and, and other things that I was supposed to do for, for my school. Um, so the other benefits is like, um, so like get loans, like if you wanted to buy a house, so a lot of people were able to get loans and um, get their own house, get a car. Um, so all those things, um, um, help you when you have a social security number and and a work permit right. and you're able to work mostly everywhere so the bad um and the negative i think of having a work permit even if you're eligible to work in a place sometimes they won't take you because you cannot work in a like a in, like a government job so i wanted mm -hmm. to work for the uh, postal service mm -hmm. and they they will take you because you have to be a uh, a U.S. citizen to work there. Wow. Okay. So things like that. Even if you're well qualified, 
you won't, um, you know, they, they won't hire you because you're on a work permit. Um, the other issue of having a work permit is like every 18 months, uh, you have to renew it. And during that time, you have to get background check and fingerprint. Mm -hmm. So in the 19 years that I had work permit, I've been, I've been fingerprint um, 12 times. Wow. And, and having a background check. And for a lot of uh, U.S. citizens, you know, they may never had a fingerprint yeah. in their yeah. life. Yeah. Um, only if you're going to, you know, for some sort of job, maybe they will do it. But uh, we ha I, I had to do it every 18 years. And um, the other thing is, like, um, you know, just, like, trying to, if you want to travel, even if you have the money, you cannot go anywhere because it doesn't allow you. But... Um, I guess for a lot of us, having the TPS and the work permit, um, it was great because a lot of people don't have that um, that opportunity and right. we were grateful right. for it, um, mm -hmm. you know, just to work and be able to provide for our family. Right. Um, and just being legal to work, I think that was, the, um, you know, we feel like... Um, like you guys were um, yeah. fortunate to have it. Yeah, because yeah. there is a lot of people, like undocumented people that don't have that privilege. It's right. a privilege to right. have it. And um, and right now, you know, it's really hard because we're losing the status that we had for so many years yeah. and uh, without any option of um, like looking for another another um, option to see what, what we're able to do. Mm -hmm. After all this many years, we feel like um, they have to take, take, you know, our our contributions and now it's like really we're good enough to work yeah. and pay taxes and all this stuff and now we are not eligible for something else. And then I know you spoke a little bit about family so in regards to families how have uh, your family's life changed since you've come to the United States like for your daughter specifically like what new opportunities has she been able to reach that maybe like you weren't able to? So my daughter was born here, so she's an American citizen, and I could see that there is a lot of opportunities for her here that I didn't have, you know, like going to, like finishing high school, uh, going to, uh, right now she's in community college. Um, she has all that freedom, like to walk free on the streets, like we didn't have that as kids because of the Civil War. Mm -hmm. um, just very simple things that I'm very grateful for, like having electricity, having water, <laughs> having well, running water, having food. Yeah, you know, having food and not worry that, you know, you might not have anything tomorrow mm -hmm. or you might have to go to work to see if you could um you can earn something for the next day. Uh, you know, everything here it's it's provide for you, you know, from your parents or even, you know, any family, it's like life here is so, so much easier. And um, a lot of times, you know, uh, young people don't understand that when we, um, when we said that things are so different because, you know, you have everything here, like you have electricity, yeah. you don't know, you don't know what is to be without that because mm -hmm. it's always been there, um, having running water, hot water. Yeah. <laughs> you have AC here and all these things um, so I think um, it is simple for my for my daughter I feel like those things are good but then on the other side I feel like she has a lot of challenges too trying to understand the culture and where we come from <laughs> so uh, being in the middle of those two things I think it's, it's, it's hard for her sometimes Right. For us, it's like, uh, you know, I feel very, um, again, fortunate to have this right, here. Right, right. I, I didn't have it when I was a kid. <laughs> Last question is, what is something you wish to let others know that aren't aware of what TPS is or what being a TPS holder is like? Um, just like anything that you would wish to share with someone who isn't aware. So something that a lot of people don't know and, and get confused sometimes is like when they ask, um, so after... Um, you know, it's a, it's a temporary thing, but after so many years, is it a temp it's a temporary anymore, right? It's almost 20 years, and mm -hmm. um, uh, people don't understand, too, that um, uh, when you're a TPS or when you are under this status is because uh, there's been a natural disaster in near the place you come from. So there's like 12 countries under this program. So there had to be a, some form of natural disasters and these countries are not able to 
mm-hmm. you know, they're not ready to receive all these people. So for uh, we're not here because um, we wanted to vacation. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. we we wanted to to do something different. Um, mm-hmm. We're here for a reason, and after so many years, we feel like. Um, we're not only here to work, but we're part of the community. Yeah, of and we have adopted this country as ours. We follow a lot of the, the rules. That, so I feel like at this point, um, you know, we should, you know, this country should be able to adopt us. <laughs> so we are eligible for it. Right. Um, yeah, so we, we've been just like any other citizen, you know, we yeah, pay taxes, we, we do all the things that uh, any, anybody else does yeah. but we don't qualify for all the things that people think like um, you know sometimes they say oh they're just here to get like welfare uh, mm-hmm. or some other um, form of assistance uh, form of assistance we don't a lot of the times we don't qualify for it and um, it, I, I guess I don't know how many people you interview but I could tell you like a lot of the TPS holder usually are very scared of applying for anything even if they need it because um, you don't want to lose this work permit. Um, You want to take care of it. It's like very um, precious thing that you don't want to lose. It's a privilege to have it. So those are um, the things that sometimes people don't understand. Um, The other thing is that, um, you know, when um, people ask me all the time, how come you're not a citizen (laughs) after all these years? Um, there is always like you know like steps that you have you have to follow yeah. through yeah. and then it's not that easy it's not like I'm just gonna go to immigration services and say hey right uh, so so those are one of the things that I would like people to understand that um, just having a status doesn't mean that you are going to be uh, a US city uh, to be a US citizen someday right. it should be yeah. right I, I wish yeah. it should be that <laughs> easy like after you know sometime after 10 years after 20 yeah. years so now yeah. I'm, like you say uh, you know I've been uh, fingerprinted so many times I've been under this status for 20 years so there should be a path to follow through and we're fighting for that right now that's, that's what we're fighting for yeah, we're fighting for that right now, yeah. but as you can see, it's not easy.